G'day folks, I'm going to part two of uh, Reefer Madness, not the kind of reefer you're thinking of, the uh, heavy industrial kind, which looks like a T-Rex has had a go at it, well, the big scrapyard claw unfortunately, um, that's my first point I want to make when I'm uh, going over this is I don't intend on keeping it in one piece, I'm going to pull the compressor set out and turn it into an air compressor. I know it'd be nice to have a 20 kilowatt booster aircon for the shed, um, so I start it up on a 40 degree day when I, before I get home and then uh, shut it off and run the mains 8.8 .8 kilowatt one, but uh, the plumbing's a little bit trashed. The claws come in and just go and rip. Um, it was no oil all over it when I found it, so it wasn't charged when it was uh, ripped, otherwise the comp compressor would have just puked all of its oil everywhere. So. Thankfully it was recovered before it was uh, mangled, but uh, it doesn't help anything. 28 pounds of R22 to recharge it after all the repair work and a new condenser. No thanks. I'll keep an eye out for a uh, complete working one eventually. It is laden with some nice things like check valves and king valves and all that good stuff. Lots of good stuff actually. So uh, yeah, it's a Kubota built engine, 4 carrier transicold. Um, CT, I think it's CT4 134 series engine. Um, I'll post a link to a PDF document if I can find one. I've got a parts manual but not a full uh, technical write up on it. I'd say it'd be roughly 50 60 horsepower, about 2 litres capacity. Um, that sort of size. I think the newer, um, the newer carriers, the um, Maxima 1200 and 1300 series, run the same sort of engine, similar revision. Uh, and they're about 2.2 .2 litres capacity so it's a decent size engine, it's not small um, yeah I've obviously fixed the uh, smashed fitting and the smashed um, oil pressure sensor for the time being, I do have oil pressure, I've checked it but yeah this hard line was smashed off along with the um, little manifold and uh, pressure sensor so that's all fixed for the time being it does. It goes straight to run and works properly now. It was only uh, shutting off because of the uh, low oil pressure. The computer will a establish that it's warmed up enough. It's like above 22 degrees Celsius or something like that, and that it has oil pressure before it goes to full run speed. Otherwise, it will shut off. Well, it'll shut off there's no, if there's no oil pressure, and it'll just continue to idle if there's no uh, heat in the engine block. Like if it's just really cold. It'll sit there and warm up before it goes straight to uh, run speed. Which is really cool. It's a really smart and uh, just a great idea. It saves the engine undue wear and tear. I wish my iX35 would do that. Instant start and then straight to 1500 RPM. I hate it when engines do that. I wish they'd have a priming system or something. At least a um, little solenoid piezo type pump that can uh, pump up oil pressure before start. Especially with the uh, keyless start these days, it makes sense to have a five second delay on keyless start. So you push the button, it'll prime the oil up and then start the engine. But they don't do that because everyone wants it now. There, <laughs> rant over. <laughs> so, yeah, the electronics still work, they all work fine. There's a basic relay block in the back of this panel here, nothing too special. I'll do an autopsy on it anyway. This is just a part two to give you a bit of a rundown of what's right and wrong with it. Mechanically the engine and compressor seem to be fine. I haven't done a full compression um, test on the compressor to see if it puts out pressure, not just volume, but it puts out a lot of volume. That's going to make an amazing air compressor. I think it's, uh, if there's two cylinders per head, it's a six cylinder. Uh, if not, it's probably a triple. So if it's one big piston per head, it's a triple. If not, it's a six. I just don't have the, well, I've got to clean that data plate up and uh, have a good look online and find out the specs on it. It's a standard Carlisle open drive compressor. Same sort of casting that you'd see on a semi-hermetic, but uh, it obviously be, the casting would be extended and have a uh, motor stator and a sealed end bell on it. So very similar equipment uh, shared across the range. Yeah. We've had it running. We're throwing gumballs and nerf darts and things into the fan. <laughs> that was yesterday's fun. So this is all going to get cut, taken off and uh, scrapped. Some of the fittings, there's a lot of heavy, heavy duty copper fittings and things on it. 
I'll end up scrapping the coils and cash them all in to make some of my money back. I paid 200 bucks for it, which is pretty reasonable. It was a gamble. I could have either got 200 bucks worth of junk or 200 bucks worth of running awesomeness, which thankfully I've got. It's just one of those things you gamble with at the scrapyard. That hose is not happy. <laughs> the cooling system is still charged. There's a radiator. No, oh, there's a radiator hose there. The radiator is the same size as the condenser. There's a big ass fan in the back there. Let's run off this little uh, counter shaft here. That belt goes up, does a, like a 45 degree twist or 90 degree twist and then uh, drives the fan on both sides. So yeah, very high cranking load. Alright, speaking of cranking, let's turn it on. I was really surprised that this still worked. The LCD is very decrepit, but it still works. Even throughout being out in the weather, so along with the uh, plastic windscreen broken. So it's giving me box temp of 20 degrees, which is accurate. Uh, it's just reading the ambient air temp. Engine hours, there's a decimal point missing there somewhere. It's probably 21,000 hours. Mind you, that did say, uh, I think it was 207 when I got it and it's only run about an hour so I don't know what's going on there I think the hour count is actually broken it doesn't make any sense but I'd say it's done at least 20,000 hours of minimum anyway so when you flick the glow switch it also triggers the fuel shut off solenoids so it'll trigger that so that's on that's set to idle um, they're manually manual stop screws. I've got to replace the one that's seized in the block there. I wanted to drop the idle speed down but the screw snapped off. So we load and then you go click
That thing's a nice little runner. It was missing a couple of cylinders when I first got it. I'm guessing because moisture's got down the intake and uh, just put a little bit of surface rust on the valves. I could hear it leaking leaking down when I uh, turned it over by hand, but literally after the very first run for like two minutes, even across all cylinders when cranking. So it's, it's come good. I don't know what that does. That connects to the fuel spill line, but it's shut off and it's still working, so I'm guessing that's also a spill bypass or something, maybe a fuel shut off. Oh, it would be. Turn that on and uh, we'll open it up and uh, it'll probably dump fuel back through the uh, system. I don't know. Wouldn't stop the pump though, you've got to get air in there if you want to really stop the pump in a hurry. It's not going to be a kill switch or anything. Don't know. It was off when I got it, it's off now and it's running, so... <laughs> And stay there. Anyway, that's your uh, little fill for now. I've got a bit of, uh, well, disassembly work to do next. That'll probably be next weekend. Full autopsy, we'll do a full tear down of the whole whole shebang and get the compressor and the engine off in one piece afterwards. And uh, good to go. It looks like the um, water pump's been leaking a bit at one point, but that's uh, to be expected, it's pretty old. I'd say this thing's done a lot of hours and they just couldn't justify rebuilding it. It may have even had a refrigerant leak at one point and uh, they couldn't justify rebuilding it because it's uh, an obsolete system. R22 is basically gone the way of the dinosaurs. Yeah. <laughs> it's a bit of a mess, so <laughs> good scrap metal, scrap value. It's all aluminium and copper alley coils. Yeah, excellent. Thanks for watching.